Did I actually spend seven months on learning how to program? Yeesh. But did I actually spend seven months on learning how to program? No. <laughs> now, I started my Python journey back in May 2024, seven and a half months ago. Now, why did I choose Python? It's the, it's the easiest programming language. It's, it's, yeah. So I used this book, Python Crash Course, which is a fairly good book. Link in the description. Now, spoiler alert, I didn't finish the book. I didn't finish the book. I'm sorry. I only learned like the basic concept and I did like one project. And the project that I made was a game. It's this game. Look at that. Wow, it's it's beautiful. And after the project, I was like, yeah, you know what? I want to make games. Fuck it. Let me just make games. I like games. Be so that's gonna be the next arc. But in this video, I just wanted to tell you how my experience was with Python as a complete beginner, no experience, no knowledge, no bitches, to now having this cool game. Amazing. In seven months. And let me tell you, okay? Let me fucking tell you. It was hard as fuck. Learning Python is pretty hard. I don't care what anyone says. I kind of struggled, okay? I thought it was hard, but it was also kind of rewarding. Now, if you're watching this, you don't have any experience. I, I do believe that you got it in you, okay? I did it, so I, 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 I trust in you. You can also do it. And besides that, I also had to do YouTube on this side. So I was doing Python, but I was also learning YouTube. It was, yeah. Realistically, I think you should be able to learn what I learned in like one or two months instead of seven months. But yeah, the whole journey is documented. So have a look if you're interested. But okay, real quick. In this video, I'm gonna talk a bit about the basic concepts that you're gonna encounter when you learn Python. I'm gonna basically kind of explain it in a nutshell and also give my rating on how difficult it is to learn the concept. So this video is basically made for people who want to get into programming or already kind of are at the basic level of programming and kind of need a reminder or you just want some relatable content when you were also beginning. You're like, yeah, yeah, you're right, bro. That was hard. So let's dive into it. Let's go, guys. So I'm using Sublime Text, but I think vs code is a lot better i've heard a lot of people be like yo you gotta use vs code so even though i've never used it go use vs code it's it's amazing <laughs> now when you want to use python you first gotta check if you even have python on your computer so you gotta go to terminal yeah, you gotta type in python lowercase like this boom and if you get this prompt you have python installed if you don't you gotta install it via the the python website okay go do it if you didn't then you come back to this and you start off with your first ever code it's to use the print function which look like this and you're probably you're probably gonna print hello world you're gonna run the code i press ctrl b for this and boom you're gonna get this thingy this output hello world that's gonna be your very first thing when you're learning python how to use a print statement guys this brings back memories man god damn now difficulty rating one out of ten it's the easiest shit ever and you can see that it's text or a string which they call it in the programming world they call it the string because of these apostrophes these apostrophes if on the other hand you also have integers which are whole numbers so this is an integer this is an integer now notice how i didn't use an apostrophe because now it's a string now it's an integer that's gonna be the second concept that you're gonna learn difference between a string words or letters and numbers integers or if you have like 10.5 or something like that this is gonna be a float so for now we learn about strings integers and float so it will look like this yes okay moving on variables very important also very fun to learn you can see them as boxes i guess where you put a label on it right so variables can be anything you could do like my little pony this will be a variable and you give it some value it could be a number like an integer or it could be some text hello and this is amazing because when we use the print function which basically prints text instead of writing hello we can basically say hey can you search up this variable and then print out the value that's associated with this variable which is hello as you can see now you might be asking why well, isn't that kind of like fucked up isn't that kind of like more work well no because imagine we have like this shit times like 10 million you can just do this variable here and print out the text times 10 million it saves you a lot of trouble so don't underestimate variables they're very handy difficulty level one out of ten these next up is the f strings you can kind of read it as this you guys remember strings when you got two of these apostrophes and then something in between 
that's basically a string, right? Now this is an F string. The F stands for format. And what this one does is basically you can combine variables within strings, which sounds very weird, but I'll try my best to kind of explain it, okay? So what do we have here? We have a variable with a value, also another variable with another value. And now we just gonna combine it by using the print function. So we use the, so we use the print function. And then we have, would have some text and then we have the F in front. This makes it an F string. Now we can type stuff. Then basically we just gotta throw in the variable like so and H. So how do you kind of remember F strings? It's literally an F with a string. F stands for format. So it's going to be F string. And then you put in variable. Variable 1, variable 2, and maybe some text in between somewhere. All right. So if I run the code, this is going to be our output. Just pause the video if you don't understand it. But okay, let's move on. Difficulty level 3 out of 10 when I began. Now it's like 1 or 2 out of 10. It kind of gets confusing sometimes, but that's fine. Next up is lists. Woo! Ooh, we love lists the concept of a list is pretty fucking cool okay you, you can do so much things with lists and you're gonna go see when we talk about all the other concepts you have so much integration like it's kind of fucked up actually i kind of don't like it <laughs> but okay how does a list look like well you got a variable in this case we have fruits and it is equal to a list you can see that it's a list by these thingies i don't know how you call them in this case we have a list where we have an apple a banana and a cherry and you can kind of see a list as just basically things as like a list holy fucking shit that's crazy so basically one variable and a lot of items within the list right now here are some things you can do with it so basically you can access the first item on the list which is going to be apple programming languages are weird in this sense because they count from zero so the first thing on the list is, will be zero. This will be one. This will be item number two. Fucking weird, I know. You got some other functions like the append. Well, print is obvious, right? We have remove and stuff. But you're going to learn all of those. They are not really that hard, but it can be sometimes very confusing. Difficulty, three out of ten. It's, 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 I love it. Sometimes confusing, but very cool. Then we got four loops. This is also kind of easy. I would give it a two out of ten in difficulty. Like if you learn this, you're going to feel so fucking cool because it's, it's actually pretty cool. So what this one does is you basically almost always use it with something else. And often it's a list. Okay. So what it does is basically the for loop loops through a list. So it goes through every item in the list one by one. And here with the indentation, you're going to say what it should do with each item. So here you create a random variable. It could have been like any variable you could think of. In this case, we just did fruit because that's easy and here you would say which list and then here you would say what it would should do with every item on the list so maybe if i talk it like how i would read this so how i would read this is for each item in the list of fruits which is this list print each fruit so what's gonna happen well it's gonna print apple then it's gonna go back to the loop it's gonna print banana it's gonna go back to the loop and then it's gonna print cherry so it would be these three okay if you're confused now don't worry it's it's really easy i i guarantee next up if a live else statements i thought this would be hard but it was really underwhelming two out of ten not difficult it's basically using logic you 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 can use logic here's an example if you have a variable with a value of 20 and here we say if the age is under 18 then we want to print this and then it comes the alif part this basically says but if but if age is equal equal to 18 then we're going to print this and then for everything else we are going to print you're an adult so if we were to look at this what would we expect well this is gonna be 20 it's not this one this is not true this is also not true so it's gonna print you're an adult god damn i'm fucking good at this shit so two out of ten it's really not that hard it's really fun though and or logic gates i guess they are kind of combined with the if statements so here we have an example variable age with the value of 25 we have a boolean value basically a variable with either true or false and here we have an if statement and a and not keyword so it's basically just reading what what it says if the age value is bigger than 18 and it is not is student so and that basically means this is false so in layman's terms if 25 is bigger than 18 yes true and not true just so basically false which it also is then we're gonna print this 
So if you really read it very slowly, this whole statement is true. And then it's going to print this sentence. So it is kind of confusing. I agree. So I would give it like three out of 10 of, of difficulty, but you'll get the hang of it. I'm sure of it. All right. Now we get to the slightly harder concepts. Dictionaries is fucking hard. I don't care. I don't care if you think it's easy. I thought it was hard. Okay. I gave it a six and a half out of 10. It's fucked up. I still don't kind of understand it. It's really hard to learn the syntax. Syntax is like the language of how you should type everything but okay dictionaries again a variable and then we store a dictionary which uh, has these cool thingies squiggly lines in it and what does a dictionary basically do well it's kind of like a list except that it has two parts it has a key with attached to it a value so it's kind of like a variable value variable value variable value so they're always in pairs now this is handy because dictionaries have to be unique so you cannot have like this whole thing twice basically so that's pretty cool now the whole thing with like accessing the item and like i will only want the key or i only want the value that syntax is fucked up it's really hard i don't care so i don't like it i don't like using dictionaries but they're very cool so in this one we basically say hey in this dictionary this key give me the value in this dictionary this key we're gonna change the value to 26 uh, and in this one we basically print the whole dictionary then the other concept is nesting uh, which is basically a list within a list or a dictionary within a dictionary or a list within a dictionary or a dictionary within a list it's f it's fucked up here's an example uh, so we have a list and within the list we have two dictionaries and this is how you would access the list and then the first positions key with its value so yeah it's do you see how fucked up it is i don't like fucking nesting i'll give it like an eight out of ten it, it, it makes my head confused i don't like it then next up is user inputs fun fact you cannot use user inputs in sublime text or vs code maybe in vs code but for this one i would have to use the terminal uh, and what basically this does is so whenever a python sees the input function it's going to give you a prompt where you can actually type or the user can actually type something and then you can write some code which is going to do something with with what the user wrote so basically here for example we have a variable and here we're going to basically ask hey can you enter your name then someone is entering the name and then here we write what we want to do with this variable so in this example we use an f string and let's say the person wrote bob then it's going to give us the output hello bob but user inputs are really versatile you can do so much with it but it's also really easy to break the whole thing so yeah i would say it's like a 7 out of 10 to learn you got you gotta be real careful with the whole thing then we got while loops here's an example it's kind of like an if statement but instead of executing the code once it's gonna keep executing the code until the condition is not met anymore so here we have a variable with the value zero and while the count so while this is still under the three we're gonna execute this piece of code so it's gonna keep printing the count and here we are actually gonna add one each time the code is executed so it's gonna start off with zero then it's gonna go to one then it's gonna go to two then it's gonna go to three and when it hits three the whole code stops because this condition is not true anymore so while loops very fun to use i do kind of get lost sometimes though so i would say it's like a four or a five out of ten in difficulty but yeah very fun then we got functions oh my god guys i was so fucking happy to like learn about functions because i was always so interested in like how this works and now i know so a function is basically something that you create yourself so you give it a name or in python's uh, language you define a function could be anything just like a variable with parameter and then you're gonna write some code here what the function is going to do and functions are really cool because you can just basically write one piece of code one time and then you can call the function while changing the parameter so this would be the function which is going to greet a name right without going into too much detail it's going to print the function with the input alice which basically means it's going to go to this parameter and then because we have this here it's going to get filled into the name variable which will give us the output hello alice we could have also done something like bob and then it's going to give us hello bob when we call the function but this is the very very basic of when you start learning functions it's going to get way harder like actually way harder so i actually put this whole thing on an 8 out of 10 in difficulty because jesus christ man i, I don't know how i did it
I kind of feel like I still didn't do it. And we got the import stuff. Now, this is really easy. You just got to import and then the thing that you want to import. Now, Python has like built in modules. Math is one of those examples, uh, but you have way more. You can go look it up yourself. Python modules. And then you can basically use functions that are within the math modules in this case. So just looking at the import concept, one out of 10, very easy. Hey, then we got classes. I fucking hate classes. The whole syntax is so hard. The whole initializing with the parameters and and, and the self and, and, and so much functions or methods when it's a class. It's so hard, confusing, 10 out of 10. I don't like classes, but you have to learn it when you're making a game. So a quick explanation, when you're making a class, you're basically making an object and then you're kind of like simulating an object. So when we are building a person class, what we are doing is we're basically building qualities that a person has, right? So a person object, usually they have a name or they have an age, like they have a height, they have a weight. All these things make up a person. So it would make sense that classes are like object oriented programming because you're working with a object with certain qualities. If I were to make a class of a dog, then it would have things like self and age as well of the gender like the, their their species for example and then all those qualities make up a dog so this sounds easy but god damn it's not easy it's fucking hard 10 out of 10 i don't like it then you also have the concept about files and exceptions so i think you know about like files you know so like notepad this is the syntax for opening a notepad and then writing it as a file and then you can write into the notepad hello world so when you open the notepad it's gonna have a text hello world in it syntax fucked up like look at this shit and then you also have like the try accept thingy and this is basically handling errors so when you have an error for example the exception error what this code basically says is hey try this and if this code works you can print this except for when you get this error if you get this error you have to print this so it's kind of like a condition based error handling i didn't really work with it too much so i would say it's a eight out of ten in difficulty i don't like it it's it's confused <laughs> this whole episode is basically man this concept is so confusing i don't like it eight out of ten in difficulty it took me 21 videos to get there and then i spent another 12 episodes on making the project which i'm not gonna go into detail but if we're just strictly talking about the concepts you can basically learn those in like three weeks with one hour of practice each day but yeah i skipped over some stuff like the json module how to test your code but for that you can just watch my video just watch my video it's fun i it's promise it's fun okay have a look please so overall what do i think well python is hard i don't care that people say that it's the easiest programming language programming in itself is hard i'm just saying sometimes the syntax of python doesn't make sense which is fucking me up i'm sorry it's doable but sometimes i just hate it it doesn't make sense man oh yeah and here's also another tip that i learned if you accidentally press insert button on your keyboard it's gonna turn into this uh, which is fucked up. So if I were to type now, it's gonna be like this instead of like, like this, you know? I didn't know how to fix that because how the fuck do you even Google something like that, right? The solution is you probably hit the insert key on your keyboard. So you gotta press on the insert key again and then it's gonna switch over. You're welcome for saving your life. So with that, I think I'm done with the Python. It taught me a lot of concepts about programming, which I'm gonna use in my next arc, which is gonna be the Godot game engine arc, where we are actually gonna make a lot of games. My dream is to make hard games, you know, like getting over it or, or Jump King. That's fun. That's fun, huh? So I'm really excited for that. So yeah, see you guys in the next journey. Peace.